Reflection. 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 Just do the reflection. And here's my reflection. Let's talk about the most problematic aspect of my media. Work. So the technical side of things. We did have some issues with levels in recording. Um, we found that there was a whining noise throughout a lot of the second half of the recording, but we didn't have time to get our hands on a recorder. We decided to improv with our phones. Um, so it definitely meant that there was a big difference between um, the beginning half of the recording quality and the second half. I found that we definitely spent more time developing our podcast content than we did on the technical side of things. And we definitely like forgot that it is actually a viewer experience that we are primarily creating. I think the way that we address mediated authenticity was really strong and creative because we could kind of like talk about how that would look in practice without kind of directly just relating to research or something. So like Imogen Poster was sort of the way that we could talk about the benefits of it by like being like, this is it in practice. How does what I learned plug in to a piece of research? Let me tell you, the research in YouTube reading actually has a few studies in it, um, like Berryman and Kavka's Crying on YouTube, um, which talks about this idea of like perceived connectedness between beauty influencers and their fans. They talk about this in terms of an effective bond, so like an emotional bond that takes place because the internet kind of has this idea of like being really close and really privy to people's real lives. And this is so different to like the scarcity, the distance and the privacy of like common media forms. So the affordances of new media, YouTube, pieces to camera, like kind of create this confessional ethos. Also, Curtin thinks that this online space creates the ability to kind of have a brand itself. Marwick also suggests that techniques of like self-branding um, become performed by these micro-celebrities. So it becomes a marketing device to brand yourself. And this kind of entrepreneurial based thing requires someone to form this authentic brand. And obviously we talked about this in the idea of image and poster. Sound has a real ability to convey mood. Yeah, sound definitely provides a kind of more like implicit and maybe complex way of conveying the mood of something. For our own project, because we made up an example of a YouTuber, the sound allowed the listener to piece together or participate in imagining the visual attributes of the people and the scandal that we talked about. Like for example, in the scene where Deborah Dee's reporting, you kind of hear like the crunch of the leaves underfoot, you hear the cicadas thrumming in the background, you hear the jingle of the dog's bell, and that kind of places the person to sort of piece together what's going on and what Deborah Dee's referring to. And you can kind of hear the sounds to get a clue, but it's a lot of imagination, I think. I think that's something valuable I learned is that you need to designate tasks early because otherwise you'll fall into the trap of what we did and we discussed for far too long what angle we wanted to take with the project in a big picture sense. What we really should have done was just get started and then be able to kind of like exercise our individual liberty to kind of like focus on certain things in the bit that we were designated. If group members' strengths have been discussed at the beginning of the project, um, then roles and tasks could have been assigned like accordingly. This would have meant that the project would have like developed more fairly in terms of people's strengths, so then it would be like more efficient as well. The feedback from the class. Um, so it kind of reminded me first and foremost that there's actually a listener who's listening to this and their experience is most important. Our feedback was centered around like evening it out the levels and kind of like not making it unpleasant. So we took steps to straighten out this level issue by making the character Imogen call into the interview it's to sort of kind of like mask the kind of bad levels. This meant that the viewer expected and could justify the differences in the quality of the recordings. The class also said that at times the pacing of the podcast was like quite jarring or didn't make sense. So we moved pieces of audio around to ensure that like the conversation led to places that the listener would kind of be able to expect. We sort of like made it more conversational. But yeah, that is all. Thin. Thin. Yeah, yeah, the end is hard to do. <laughs>